When he woke, he looked around, he didn't know anybody. So he looked at me, he says, who are you? I said, my name's Mickey, I'm your father. Oh, he says, yeah, yeah, I remember now. He looked around the house, he started to remember little things around the house. He looked at his guitar, he said, what's that? You used to play, and you were good. You were the best. And now, I says, I know you're gonna get better, and you're gonna be better than you ever were. <laughs> I haven't heard a guitar player of any real note that has not copied some of his stuff and been influenced by him in the last 20 years. As unknown as he might be among the general public, among guitar giants, he's a, a name to be reckoned with. He's one that once you hear him play, you know, you never forget him. Pat couldn't have been, I think he would be maybe around 19 years old. And it was hard to believe that he was that young because his ability, his, his playing ability was, was so, so much more advanced. And he was just unbelievable. His execution, he had speed. Usually, it, you find a lot of jazz guitars, they're full of technique and no, 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 no bottom to it. But Pat could get funky, he could get classical. He backed down from nothing. We tackled some, some dynamite hard tunes, you know. And if it hadn't been for Pat, Don and I wouldn't have been able to play these tunes. The first time I heard him play was actually at a small jazz club in Boston called Connolly's, which no longer exists. And he was playing with Brother Jack McDuff and the organ groups at the time. And I was a student at Berkeley School, you know, a green young kid. I remember seeing this guy walk out very thin, frail-looking guy, and there was a Les Paul guitar sitting in the bandstand, and I knew how heavy those were, and I said, Jesus, that guy, boy, he's so small and light, I bet he can't even pick up the guitar. And within about, you know, a chorus or so, I, all my thoughts were dispelled, you know, that this guy could play. I mean, he, he blew me away completely. When Pat would, uh, would teach you, he would show you the things that he was developing at the time. Okay. Uh, I can't think this way. I well, you think forever, that way. I <laughs> go on forever like that. It wasn't a guitar now, lesson. My whole concept of the way he taught was um, a master and an apprentice, on. and that's the way Pat approached everything. He says, Papa, he says, I got some bad news to tell you. I said, what is it? He said, they found a tumor in my, in my brain. What's involved in the operation is to make a trap door in the skull, find the group of abnormal blood vessels, and then with a microscope, actually close them off with a current. And then when they're all closed off, the, uh, the actual malformation itself can be removed. When he woke, he looked around, he didn't know anybody. So he looked at me, he says, who are you? I said, my name's Mickey, I'm your father. Oh, he says, yeah, yeah, I remember now. But he didn't recognize his mother. Didn't recognize nobody else, just me. I was extremely depressed at the end of my surgery. I was bald of head and bald of mind and I needed a place to hide. When he came home, his memory was very, very bad. He didn't remember a damn thing. No friends, nobody. He didn't know that he ever played guitar. He really didn't know what he was doing. He didn't know nothing about the guitar. But every time he, he would pass, pass the, the living room, he'd look at the guitar. He'd stop at that doorway and Look back at the guitar and wouldn't say nothing. I wouldn't say, Pat, pick it up. I wouldn't say nothing. 
I wait for the time when he wanted to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, the bottom line is proud to welcome back to New York, Pat Martino and friends.